you so much. Once again, dear colleagues, good afternoon. It's uh, June 17th. Uh, and I beg your pardon that according to the procedure, I'll have to read these formal things for a very long period of time. So it's June 17th, 2021, uh, 12 noon, Moscow time. And we're beginning the panel session for the defense of the thesis by uh, Mohamed Mandur. The thesis is submitted for the academic degree of the candidate of sciences in physics and mathematics. The specialization is 010408, plasma physics. The topic of the thesis is the investigation of photoplasma mixtures with sodium vapor with inert gases based on 2D simulation. Under the order issued by uh, the academic secretary of St. Petersburg State University, Alexander Gnotov, uh, as of April 9th, 2021, uh, I, Nikolai Timofeev, Doctor of Sciences in Physics and Mathematics, Professor, Head of the Department of Optics of St. Petersburg State University, was appointed the chairperson of this dissertation board. The order also approved the candidacies of all the board members. And let me introduce them. So, first of all, Igor Marshak uh, to the right, Doctor of Sciences in Physics and Mathematics, Professor of the Department of General Physics One of St. Petersburg State University and Head of the Department. The following members of the board are working remotely. Valery Smirnov, Doctor of Sciences in Physics and Mathematics, Associate Professor of the Department of Optics of St. Petersburg State University. Valery, uh, do you see us and hear us? Yes, I do. Everything is okay. Thank you. Vladimir Rozhansky, Doctor of Sciences in Physics and Mathematics, Professor of uh, Peter the Great Technical University, Polytech. Uh, Vladimir, do you see us and hear us? Yes, yes, I do. Everything is okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, then, uh, Vladimir Bichkov, Doctor of Sciences in Physics and Mathematics, leading researcher at the Lomonos of Moscow State University. Uh, Vladimir, do you hear us and see us? Are you with us? Vladimir? Uh, so I will continue then, and a bit later I'll get back to the question. Yeah. Oh, okay. We'll need to wait. Okay. Maybe he turned off the sound on his computer. If this happens, uh, Vladimir Lvovich, do you hear us? So, distinguished colleagues, uh, I, I believe I'll need to announce the first technical break until we stab uh, establish contact with uh, Vladimir Bichkov. Bichkov.
colleagues, the first technical break is over. Unfortunately, we did not manage to establish connection with Vladimir Lvovich Bichkov. But still, we have the quorum. As I've already mentioned, we have uh, six members of the board, and two thirds make a quorum for people, and we have five people left, five board members left. Therefore, we have an opportunity to continue our session, and I continue the introduction of the members of the board. Uh, Leonid Samonchuk, Doctor of Sciences in Physics and Mathematics, Professor, Chief Researcher at the Stepanov Institute of Physics of the Belarus Academy of Sciences. Lenin, do you see us and hear us? Yes, yes, I do. Okay, thank you so much. No unexpected things here. And certainly we have our candidate for the degree, Amandir Mohamed Mahsoub Mahsoub Mahsoub, and his thesis supervisor, Kudrav Tifanatoli, candidate of sciences in physics and mathematics, associate professor of the Department of Optics of St. Petersburg State University. I would like to inform you that the panel session of the dissertation board is being recorded and broadcast on the St. Petersburg State University website, and it is also interpreted from Russian into English and vice versa. Currently, we have, we have an email address posted on the page with live broadcast of the board session, and all listeners can submit their questions to um, Amandur Mohamed Mahsib online, the questions regarding the thesis or scientific discussion. These questions will be forwarded to me by our technical service, and I will read them out during the discussion. The questions must be related to the presentation of the candidate for the degree and to the content of the thesis. And uh, do not forget to give your name and position if you submit a question. The questions that have nothing to do with the scientific discussion or dissertation text uh, assessment will not be voiced. Under the order on the procedure of granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University, approved by local normative acts, the session of the dissertation board is valid, providing two thirds of the appointed board members are present. And the total number is not to be fewer than four people. Our dissertation board consists of six people. Unfortunately, oh, we did not establish connection with Vladimir Lvovich. And we have five members of the board here uh, to are here with us. And three are working remotely. Therefore, we have a quorum. And uh, we have a multimedia connection with all the members of the board who are working remotely. Our session should not last more than two hours. And the agenda is as follows. <clears throat> First comes the chairman's presentation about the documents submitted by the candidate for the degree and their conformity with the requirements. Then chairman replies to questions, if any. Five minutes for that. Second, the candidate's presentation providing an overview and findings of the research. Fifteen minutes for that. Third, questions to the candidate regarding the presentation. Uh, then the candidates replies to the questions. Then fifth, reports on the thesis. The board members will be taking the floor in turns to provide their reviews and questions. Uh, ten minutes per speaker. Sixth, uh, the chairman's report on the thesis. Uh, well, I also have ten minutes for that. I believe it's a bit too much. Then the candidates' comments about the reports on the thesis and replies to the questions. Uh, Twenty minutes for all. Then open discussion. Anyone present at the defense may state their position and ask questions on the thesis. And I kindly ask you to fill in the registration form and introduce yourself before I give you the floor. Then uh, the chairman will ask the questions submitted during the broadcast via our website. Then uh, the candidates replies to the questions. Then 
We're going to listen to the presentation of the candidate's thesis supervisor. Three minutes for that. Then we're going to have a five-minute discussion before the open balloting on conferring or non-conferring the academic degree. The discussion of the results of the defense is not broadcast, I believe. Five minutes will be quite enough for that. Next comes open balloting, vote counting, and recording of the results into the protocol. Then uh, we're going to make a decision on whether to confer the academic degree or not. And finally, we're going to listen to the candidate's closing speech. Two minutes for that. Distinguished colleagues, any questions or comments on our agenda? None. OK. If there are no questions, uh, let us proceed. But before we do that, I kindly ask you to switch off the sound on your mobile phones. Thank you. So, the thesis by Mandur Mohamed Mahsub 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 for the academic degree of the candidate of sciences in physics and mathematics, the specialization uh, 010408, plasma physics, is titled uh, Investigation of Photoplasma and Mixtures of Sodium Vapor with Inert Gases Based on 2D simulation. The thesis was approved for the defense by the order of the academic secretary of St. Petersburg State University issued March 24th this year. Uh, Mandar Mohamed Mahsub 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 has prepared his dissertation at St. Petersburg State University. And uh, Kudriaf Tsef Anatoly, candidate of sciences in physics and mathematics, associate professor of the Department of Optics of St. Petersburg State University, is the thesis supervisor. Five published works describe uh, the research findings of uh, and the candidate for the degree. And uh, the uh, index in um, Web of Science and Scopus. The candidate has submitted the full set of documents to the academic secretary. <clears throat> and the above mentioned documents comply with item 12, section 3 of the order of St. Petersburg State University. And all the documents, as far as I'm informed, comply with the requirements and are found in the certification file of the candidate for the degree and the curator of the defense member of the dissertation board support department has all the copies. And before I give the floor to our candidate for the degree, distinguished members of the board, I would like to ask you if you have any general questions to the candidate for the degree and I would like to ask you if there is a need to consider the whole list of documents uh, provided by the candidate for the degree. No, no need for that. No need for that. Okay, thank you. Then, Mohammed, please, you have the floor. Uh, so the report will be in uh, the English language. You all have uh, headsets, and uh, you can choose uh, simultaneous interpretation of the report. So, Mohammed, please, you have the floor. Thank you. <coughs> Dear Chairman and the members of the Dissertation Council, with your permission, let me represent my report on the dissertation work for the degree of candidate of physical and mathematical sciences. The theme of my work is investigation of photoplasma and mixtures of sodium vapor with inert gases based on two dimension simulation. The thesis consists of an introduction, five chapters, conclusion, 55 figures, six tables, 171 references, and an appendix. In chapter one, the literature review gives a summary of the available literature related to photoplasma and its types. A numerical model of photoplasma has been introduced in Chapter 2. In Chapter 3, the effectiveness of using the two-chamber configuration over the cell, the single one, in obtaining notable EMF in a photoplasma cell is verified. Photoplasma created in a cylindrical two-chamber cell has been studied for different sodium Noble gas uh, mixtures at different buffer gas pressure in chapter four is showing that along with the flows of classical ambigular diffusion vortex of currents, uh, vortex currents of electrons are also formed in chapter five. Relevance of the problem. Photoplasma is produced by involving the action of optical resonance radiation on a gas. The photoplasma is applied in many fields such as a laser based isotope separation and others. However, most previous studies have focused on laser-induced photoplasma and the little fragmented research was conduct conducted on non-laser one. 
Therefore, self-consistent, systematic, and correct description of the solar lamp photoplasma, taking into account detailed plasma chemistry, remains a relevant problem. This work aims to establish a self-consistent stationary photoplasma model in sodium vapor in noble gas mixtures involving suggested plasma chem chemistry and transport and uh, radiative transfer processes. Show the ability to have an, an electromotive force from a two-chamber cell configuration of gas mixtures for concentrated light radiation. Study the effect of the second chamber dimensions and the pressure of buffer gas on the resulting EMF. Moreover, optimize the design parameters. Emerge the kernel of transport processes that could give us a more detailed understanding of the processes affecting the created photoplasma parameters. Scientific novelty. The phenomenology of creating steady photoplasma using non-laser radiation absorption of sodium vapor with different noble gas mixture is described, which is practically either absent or fragmented in literature today. It is showing that the two-chamber configuration is more eligible for creating electromotive force in photoplasma cell over single one. Suggested consideration of plasma chemistry and so the charge and radiation transfer processes are presented. It's showing that the sodium vapor argon gas mixture introduce a relatively good result over using other noble gases from plasma parameters and commercial aspects. The study of the new phenomenon, the presence of electron vortex in steadily generated two-dimensional photoplasma is presented. The practical value of research the developed model can be used to design a photoelectric converter based on solar irradiation gas lamp uh, being irradiated. Approbation of the research results. On the topic of dissertation, 11 works were published, including five articles. All articles. Владимир Александрович, пожалуйста, выключите звук. Eleven works were published, including five articles. All articles have been published in scientific journals and texted by Web of Science and Scopus database. Photoplasma creation, figure one, shows the sodium atom energy levels with neutral and excited states, which are of interest to our study. The current model can be characterized as a five-level model. Resonantly excited atoms are formed as a result of absorption of resonant radiation. Then collision or collisions of these excited atoms with the same level lead to the formation of more highly excited atoms in the energy pooling reaction and subsequently to their ionization either by binning and associative uh, or associative ionization. Finally, the released electrons in the ionization process interact with the normal and excited atoms that lead to plasma formation and transport processes. Governing equation, a detailed numerical model of photoplasma has been introduced with a two-dimensional axis symmetric plasma module in COMSOL using the drift diffusion interface. In this interface, the well-known plasma fluid model describes the plasma using the following equations. Continuity equation to calculate uh, particle density of different species, momentum balance equation to obtain particle flux, for different species, Poisson's equation for the electrostatic field, electron energy balance equation for electron in, uh, mean energy. Different configuration, configurations are suggested, typically a single and two chamber cell configuration. The first chamber uh, serves as a driver chamber in which the external source is applied while the second chamber serves as expansion diffusion volume. The mean values of resonance pump rate in the volume of the first chamber with a homogeneous profile of photoexcitation rate. These values can be related to the mean value of resonance radiation density flux for certain model assumptions. In this, uh, in the single chamber configuration, sodium vapor photoexcitation occurs on the whole chamber with no expansion or diffusion regime. Figure three shows electron tenacity, electron temperature, and electric potential. From figure four, the ionization rate can be estimated at 10 to the power uh, negative four. Yeah. Yeah. The quasi-neutrality quasi of plasma is apparent except for the region near the wall. 
the rate of binning ionization exceeds the rate of formation of molecular ions in associative ionization, so that molecular ion density is much smaller than atomic one with a good agreement of available literature. The average values of electron temperature and density almost do not depend on the size of the electrodes of the single chamber gas cell. In figure 5, the absolute value of photo EMF doesn't exceed 0.3 volts. On the other hand, in the two chamber cell configuration, a second chamber is present that acts as an expansion for the diffusion regime of plasma. At first, optimizing the dimensions of the second chamber as shown in figure 6, axial, axial profiles of electron density are not the same. For R1 equal R2 equals half, half centimeter, electron density at the second chamber center is different from one with radii larger than the first chamber radius. F while for R2 bigger than 2 cm, the central axial profiles behave similarly and are close in magnitude. In figure 7a, it can be seen that the variation of the maximum values of electron temperature is within 0.1, 0 0.01 uh, electron volt. However, the corresponding change in EMF uh, could be almost 1 volt as shown in figure 7b. Previous studies suggested that EMF depends on each of electron uh, density in both chambers, electron temperature, and characteristic diffusion length of the chambers. Um, therefore, other geometries are introduced in figure 8 to verify the contribution of diffusion length lambda 2 in, the cha in changing the obtained EMF regardless of geometry of the second chamber. However, the dependence of such parameters is not direct, uh, direct equality as implied by these studies, but it is quite more. The possible interpretation for, su for such discrimination um, that, uh, is that the previous estimations of EMF in literature were, were assuming to have only the ambiguous diffusion throughout the plasma, while here the two-dimensional geometry results in vortex of currents in plasma even though uh, the magnetic field is not present. For comparison, figure 9 shows axial distribution of electron density at the center of the cell for both single and two chambers cell configurations with different geometries. In all cases, the, the electron density gradient is analogous in the driver chamber, but in the expansion, in expansion volume, the gradient of electron density is variable based on the chamber dimensions. In turn, the EMF intensively affected by the second chamber presence and dimensions. Figure 10 shows the dependence of maximum values of electron temperature and the EMF on char characteristic diffusion lengths of the second chamber. Based on these results, the two chamber configuration is more eligible for creating EMF in photoplasma cells over the single one regardless of the second chamber geometry. Now we expand our study to other novel gases and pressures. From figure 11, it can be seen that four heavier gases, argon, krypton, xenon, uh, the electron density is much larger than lighter gas, helium neon, with an order of magnitude at a certain pressure. However, for heavy, uh, heavy gases, due to Ramsauer minimum, the increase in electron density is rather small for a certain for a certain pressure, especially at uh, larger values of buffer gas yeah. pressure. As shown in figure 12, electron temperature has a non-linear but monotonous increase with increasing pressure, unlike electron density with an almost linear increase with increasing pressure. For lighter gases at relatively low pressures, smaller than one tor, electron temperature has almost a constant spatial profile in the two chambers as shown, for instance, in figure 13a, for sodium neon mixture. However, at higher pressures uh, larger than one tor, the electron temperature profile at the central axis of the two chamber cell shows a gradient in, uh, in electron temperature. The heavier gases act differently, as, as the gradient occurs at rather small values of buffer gas pressure. For instance, for xenon shown in figure 13b, 
the electron temperature is constant for pressures up to 0.3 torr while for pressure larger than 0.7 torr there is a gradient in the profile of electron temperature which increases drastically with increasing of pressure this non-homogeneity of special profile of electron temperature can result in an interesting vortex in, uh, of electron in the cell Resonance sodium atoms in S3B uh, density and the electromotive force are affected by the profile of electron temperature as shown in figure 14 and 15 respectively. For different sodium noble uh, gas mixtures, the electron temperature spatial uh, profile is almost constant for Te smaller than 0.52 electron volt, while for higher Te the gradient of, uh, in the profile is clear. For sodium noble gas mixtures with heavier noble gas, argon, krypton, and xenon, the gradient in electron temperature occurs at lower value values uh, of buffer gas pressures. EMF decreases more drastically with increasing pressure corresponding to electron temperature larger than 0.52 electron volt. This is also the case for NS3B density shown in figure 14, therefore the creation of resonance sodium atoms is slightly affected by the buffer gas type at certain pressure. As shown in figure 16, at novel gas pressure equals 0.3 torr, the maximum electron temperature is, uh, is uh, 0.26 electron volt with almost no significant gradient in Te for sodium neon uh, mixture, while at the same pressure, maximum electron temperature is 0.52 electron volt with some gradient for sodium xenon mixture for noble uh, gas mixture equals one torr maximum electron temperature increase to uh, 0.47 and nearly maintains its constant distribution for sodium neon mixture while increased to 0.56 electron volt for sodium xenon mixture at noble gas pressure equals five torr the electron temperature gradient becomes more intensive for the sodium xenon mixture, thus the decrease in EMF becomes larger than the uh, sodium neon uh, mixture case. case. Elect electron vortices in plasma and photoplasma come from the non parallelity of gradients of electron density and temperature. This condition is seen for sodium argon mixture as shown in figure 17a, which give, gives rise to the presence of non ampipolarity in the electron flux and hence a vortex in the electron current. The resulting total flux is shown in figure 17b, where the rotation direction is counterclockwise. Due to the nature of Ramsauer minimum, the small cross section of uh, uh, four electron temperature than one electron volt in uh, heavy noble gases, the vortex in current is clockwise. Figure uh, 18. Figure 18 shows the detail. Uh, flux component of charged particles, electrons, and ions. In figure A shows the diffusive electron flux, while in figure B, migrative electron flux is shown. In the drift diffusion uh, approximation, the drift and uh, the diffusion and drift component much, uh, must be balance each other. Therefore, the total electron flux is much less than each of its components, as shown in figure C. The diffusion flux is a forward flux with a direction from the first chamber to second chamber. However, the drift flux is in the opposite direction, generating a total electron flux is much less by three orders of magnitude than each component with a vertical nature. The atomic and molecular ions, uh, ion fluxes are forward ones, as shown in figure D and E, respectively. The contribution of the atomic ion flux is more significant by one order of magnitude than the molecular one. In figure F, the total flux has both constant and vortex components, which are difficult to distinguish ambiguously. Figure 19 shows a, current, a clear current vortex in the clockwise direction at two different values of argon pressure equals one and 10 torr, figure B and C, respectively. However, only a solenoidal-like open vortex appears at argon pressure equals 0.1 uh, torr because of the tiny gradient of electron temperature in figure A. 
the current moves from the wall of the second chamber to the driver due to the electron movement from there thanks to radial ion flow it proceeds towards the driver sideboard in figure 28 the gradient of the electron temperature is small for argon pressure smaller than one but for argon pressures larger than one tor a gradient of electron temperature is relatively more significant in figure 20b the total flux at the driver wall shows the to that the total flux increases with the increase of argon pressure up to one tor then it decreases for argon pressure larger than one tor the vortices becomes closer to the side to the driver wall for argon pressure larger than one tor uh, due to this dependency the obtained emf depends on the electron temperature gradient consequently the vortices intensity appear in the total flux which arose with the increase of ion pressure for other buffer gases the total current in figure 21a helium shows a vortex like behavior which is rather smaller than for the, uh, than the following the other following cases with the increase of the buffer gas mass and in turn the different cross sections of the momentum transfer the gradient of electron temperature through the cell becomes relatively more significant the results this results in the emergence of rather bigger current vortices in the plasma as shown in figure 21 b c d in general um, for a larger electron temperature gradient the current vortices increase figure 22a shows the electron temperature gradient as the driver chamber wall as expected for each different mixture when increasing the buffer gas pressure the electron temperature gradient relatively increase moreover for heavier gases the value of electron temperature decreases with increase of pressure also in figure 22b the significant decrease in a specific region of the total flux as the driver chamber wall with increasing pressure is apparent at each different sodium uh, novel gas mixture in conclusion we can say that for the first time a detailed numerical model of photoplasma has been introduced with a two-dimensional axisymmetric plasma module in COMSOL using the drift diffusion interface for the first time a detailed photoplasma chemistry has been introduced the two-chamber configuration is more eligible for creating EMF in photoplasma cells over the single one regardless of the second chamber geometry based on the, result, the obtained results the key point of having a higher EMF value is not the geometry itself but the diffusion length of the second chamber uh, sodium argon mixture shows rather good results over using other noble gases from uh, plasma parameters and the commercial aspects it is showing that along with the flows of classical and bipolar diffusion vortex currents uh, of electrons are also formed the dependence of current vortices and consequently on uh, the generated emf on the pressure of the buffer gas and the gas type is showing the obtained results can be used to project and uh, create a photoelectric based a photoelectric converter based on a two-chamber device with a mixture of sodium and noble uh, gases operating by concentrated lamp, uh, concentrated solar or gas lamp radiation. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. Please, the questions. Thank you very much, Mohammed. Please, questions, if there are any. Do we have any questions to the candidate for the degree? Okay, then I'll ask. Mohammed, I have two questions. The first question is as follows. One of the conclusions that you make in your work is uh, about the fact that you believe that natri uh, argon mixture is better than um, the mixture, mixtures of natrium with, uh, with sodium or with other gases. Please show slide 14 and then slide 16. So, well, let's start with 14. If we have a look at this image, I wouldn't say that uh, the mixture with argon is, is standing out of other mixtures. For example, in the right, uh, with xenon, you have electron temperature that is higher. And to the left, 
Argon lies somewhere in between the line of Argon. Therefore, I have the following question. What are the criteria that you used to say that natri argon mixture is better than other inert gases um, mixtures? So what do you mean by that? Вот эти показатели идут в целом. Но как вы можете видеть, с точки зрения ДС, мы можем увидеть, что аргон показывает более высокие показатели ДС. Потому что она не зависит от максимальной температуры в ячейке но зависит от распределения электронной температуры в, клет... в камере, в ячейке. И, как мы можем видеть, благодаря вихрям электронного потока в случае зенона, ксенона, мы можем видеть, что что вихри потоков подходят ближе к стенке и вызывают а, 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 изменения температуры и, соответственно, снижают ЭДС. То есть здесь все зависит не только от показателя максимальной электронной температуры, но также от распределения. А, также от распределения. Движущая сила. So the main criterion was electromotive force here. Okay, thank you. And the second question. And the second question is clear that you're working with photoplasma, but from the point of view of uh, this um, easiness to get electrons and ions, cesium, I believe, would be more efficient than uh, sodium because cesium has less ionization potential and the levels are located lower. Why did you choose uh, sodium? That's the first half of question. And the second half of question is, uh, do you think to continue this work considering cesium with inert gases? First, we uh, decided to uh, test all uh, the uh, alkali metals. We tested uh, all, all of them in, uh, sim uh, in a simple model, and we found that uh, uh, the values uh, are better uh, for uh, sodium. So we decided to, to continue only with sodium. And uh, there, uh, there is also uh, a minus uh, in the work with uh, cesium is that uh, all the reactions are not uh, called the rate of uh, rate coefficients of reactions are, are not available in, in the literature, especially associated by ionization for uh, cesium. Uh, they are recommended that uh, we, we cannot find uh, a reliable uh, values for rate coefficients. I think that it, it's, uh, if we continue with the practical work, uh, I think we will choose the uh, cesium. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Other questions, if there are any? Yes, Vladimir, please, you, you raise your hand. Yes, the question is as follows. Uh, to the consideration that you used in the thesis is a correct one, is a good one, but to what extent the results were different from uh, single-dimensional consideration if we talk about uh, the equality of flows of electrons and ions. For example, the electron concentration in your calculations, electron density, how much is it differ from a single-dimensional model? In the, uh, in the remarks, uh, 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 for one uh, only one dimension, uh, we uh, th there are a lot of limitations. They didn't uh, include radiation trapping. They didn't include uh, uh, the electron vortex that appears in the two dimensions. So that we cannot compare correctly between one dimensional and the two dimensional analysis because the leak of uh, uh, one dimension analysis. They didn't use, uh, for, for example, they didn't use uh, the two chamber cell configuration. They only used one single, uh, single one uh, chamber. Vladimir, are you satisfied with the answer? Well, partially. 
if, for example, you compare them between themselves, uh, maybe there's 1% of electron density concentration difference, or maybe 10%, or several times. So what's your expert assessment here? What differences can be find, found here? Well, basically, numerically, you see, what's the difference in percentage between electron densities uh, if you use a simplified approach, for example, if you would choose a simplified approach with the same sources and everything else? For 1% or 10% difference, maybe is a difference of several orders, how do you think what the difference would be roughly? Thank you. Thank you. So, are you satisfied with the answer? Okay. Yes. Yes, Leonid, your question. On slide number 16, you demonstrate the dependency on pressure. But we see that the limitations on pressure for the chosen camera are uh, 5 or 10 uh, uh, tor. So, this limitation of pressure, is it associated with the size of the chamber? If we uh, say, for example, the size is less, can we thus raise pressure in the chamber uh, in order to make it more efficient? Um, when, uh, we limited this uh, values for uh, five uh, Thor uh, because the stability of the uh, program is uh, within uh, 0.1 uh, Thor uh, to uh, 5 Thor uh, because we uh, uh, choose the model of uh, radiation uh, trapping uh, based on these results. If we uh, if we extend uh, uh, pressure uh, buffer gas pressures, we should reconsider the constants and the values of uh, escape factors that we use. Uh, Leonid, are you satisfied with the answer? Yes, I would like to add up to the question. So uh, that's what Leonid asked about. Five tours, several tour. Uh, it uh, is limited by the model. The ch choice is limited by the model that you use because if you increase the pressure, it's likely that you should consider other processes as well, some additional processes. Is it right? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Other questions, please? Okay, if there are no questions, uh, thank you very much, Mohammed. Uh, Natalia, uh, did we get any external reviews for Mohammed's work? None. Okay. Now, uh, we are approaching the point when all the members of the board should deliver their reviews and uh, read their reports. And I offer to answer questions uh, at once after the review not to take too much time, and it's easier to remember the questions in this case. And uh, for the listeners, it will be much more convenient. So please, I give the floor to uh, Igor Chislavich, uh, to Professor Mashak. Well, I won't read out my review. It's quite short, and it's quite positive. Um, I have a very positive impression on the work within the framework of uh, the chosen model, within the framework of the accessible instrumentation. Uh, the candidate for the degree did what, uh, everything uh, as uh, he needed to do. There was a question of a 1D and 2D model, and I cannot but mention that I believe it depends on the form of uh, the chamber that you use. Maybe it can be a, a cylinder or flat uh, chamber. I believe the errors will differ when we talk about the application of 2D model to such cases. And uh, during your presentation, I had a question. The basic criteria that you use to define the efficiency of such a mixture is uh, the possibility to generate uh, uh, to generate um, EMF. But if we talk about correct application of these ideas, we should think about possible um, um, capacity that's taken out. Certainly, we should discuss what was already done in the work, but uh, rather than what wasn't done. But still, it's very interesting 
Um, are there any limitations for the future here? And I've already mentioned that the chosen instrument was quite adequate, and the results um, are not questioned at all. Certainly, they are quite useful. And we hope that for the future of this science, they will be used as well. From my point of view, the candidate for the degree deserves uh, the degree of the candidate of sciences in physics and mathematics. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Igor, Mohammed, uh, you can answer the question. Uh, as we uh, see it in the, in the slides, that uh, the geometry itself does not uh, change the uh, expected values, but mm -hmm. the uh, chamber, uh, the characteristic diffusion lens of the chamber. Uh, for example, here in this uh, graph, number uh, 10, we can see that for different uh, uh, char uh, characteristic diffusion lens of second chamber, we can get a monotonous increase in electromotive force. Uh, this values for uh, different geometries. It contains uh, uh, the single chamber and the two chamber elliptical and the two chamber spherical and the two chamber cylindrical, different geometries. But the key point is the characteristic length of the chamber itself, not the geometry. Yes, yes. Uh, and this second question about... Second part of the question was uh, dealing with the potential capacity that will be taken out, the potential power that can be taken out. Uh, how do you define the potential power? Because you are uh, working on a transform of light into el electricity. So what's the possible power? Or am I mistaken? We uh, have uh, made um, uh, a parametric sweep uh, using console, and uh, we found that uh, the efficiency of the photoelectric uh, is rather small. Uh, the, the power output uh, is uh, about, uh, the efficiency is about 25 uh, percentage. It yes. 25. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Yes. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, 2.5, uh, sorry, 2.5, ah. 2.5 <laughs> percentage. Well, thank you very much. Because the, uh, in plasma, uh, the channel of the plasma, the conductivity of the mm -hmm. plasma itself uh, makes the electric current passes through the plasma, not uh, through the external resistance. So. Uh, the problem is that we have a very large shunt resistant in, in plasma itself. Yes. yes. A very small shunt resistance. Thank you so much, Igor. Are you satisfied? Yes, certainly. Thank you. So, Professor Smirnov, please, you have the floor. Uh, as uh, all the uh, reports were already published on the St. Petersburg State University website, just to give us the main conclusions and uh, the questions. Okay, I'll omit er everything, but I'll say that this work is quite large, it's quite interesting, and it has practical value due to catalytic transformations demonstrated in the work. And as a conclusion, uh, we need to resolve uh, the boundary uh, problem. And from a mathematical point of view, that's an instrument to resolve border problems. The, the dissertation describes the system of equations for photoplasma that says nothing about the mo this marginal condition, uh, boundary conditions, and we know that they define the solution of the problem. And. Uh, as without boundary uh, conditions, you can't resolve this uh, console problem, uh, then it means that some conditions were introduced, but the thesis says nothing about it.
So that's my only comment. But as far as I believe, um, our candidate for the degree deserves the degree of the candidate of sciences and physics and mathematics. That's it. Uh, uh, Valeria, the conclusion? Yes, uh, the candidate for the degree deserves. Yes. Oh, I omitted it. OK, I missed it. You've already said. OK, Mohammed, please, you can answer. Um, thanks for Professor Valery Vladimirovich Smirnov for his remarks. Regarding this remark, um, uh, it is a notable uh, remark. Uh, however, in our work, we didn't use any special boundary conditions. We have used the standard boundary conditions from the plasma module in console multiphysics. Um, manual with, uh, which uh, have been tested and used by thousands of people. Uh, we understand that these conditions are approximate and can be refined, but this was not a part of the task of the work. For example, uh, by assigning the wall to ground in COMSOL, this impl implements that the ground uh, is a zero potential on the boundary. And this is also the case for other side walls as dielectric and uh, floating potential. For instance, some of the standard boundary conditions on COMSOL is shown in this slide. Uh, professor, are you satisfied with the answer? Yeah, well, basically, yes, it's clear that you use uh, standard conditions for the plasma module. But over there, there was a question. In the work, you consider not just electron potential, you also consider the mass particles, excited particles. So can you switch in your presentation to slide number 10? Yes. Uh, this uh, figure four, you show the distribution of excited particles on this image. And for them, uh, what boundary conditions did you have? the wall uh, um, we only uh, stated that uh, that uh, uh, we have uh, an excited state or a higher excited state and we use only uh, the standard from console from console modu module so these are zero conditions at the border yes Okay, then, uh, then it's clear. Thank you so much for the answer. Uh, uh, thank you. Valery, Leonid, please, you have the floor. Well, uh, first of all, I'll say a few words about the relevance of this work, as I believe this work is quite a relevant one. From two points of view. First of all, from the fundamental point of view, because this work studies plasma with high electron density and low temperature. And from the, on the other hand, from the practical point of view, it's important because this plasma allows to create and will allow to create energy converters for optic irradiation in electricity. That's it. I believe that defines the relevance of this uh, topic of the thesis. And as of today, we know that uh, there are such solar panel converters uh, that transform energy. And they work at low temperatures. And as for plasma, options, I believe they will allow to work at higher temperatures. As far as I believe, and this will allow us to concentrate solar energy in order to obtain electricity. And the thesis, as far as I'm concerned, is written quite well 
It has uh, re the relevance of the work described, and it also formulated the m basic provisions that are brought for the defense, and it describes novelty and practical importance of the work. And the uh, so, uh, sources literature list is quite uh, extensive. Um, the author um, uh, provides very good uh, review. And he uh, had uh, made reports at international conferences. And if we talk shortly about the results that were provided in the work, uh, the work uh, carried out the 2D uh, modeling. The author performed the analysis of efficiency of using two chamber configurations. Uh, he compared uh, um, other uh, chambers, uh, it with other chambers in order to obtain uh, a good uh, EMF. And the studies were carried out for different combinations of chambers, for different combinations of gases with alkaline metals. And he chose um, this uh, mixture of uh, sodium and argon uh, to demonstrate that it's a more efficient mixture uh, to be used. And it's used quite well to uh, create a good EMF. And uh, the discovery of new event, a phenomenon that is observed in such a diffusion of plasma in the second chamber or this phenomenon of formation of electron vortices is also something new, is also a novelty, and it characterizes this work quite well. And the work demonstrated how they influence the difference of potential. Still, although this dissertation is a finished and original scientific study, and uh, the results uh, will be applied in practice. Uh, as for the text of the thesis, I have made four comments, but they are not uh, critical, you see. But uh, the first remark that was already mentioned is that uh, the work does not provide sufficient information on the comparison with experiment and with the works of other authors, even a theoretical uh, you know, consideration. The second point is it's not quite clear why do you mean by this grounded electron in this calculation and why do you use it? Because, in fact, it's not important whether electrode is uh, grounded or not because you'll have the slip of a potential when shifting from plasma to uh, electrode. And out of a uh, third question, out of the presented results, we see that the generated electromotive forces are strongly associated with the temperature of electrons. But uh, uh, this um, link is not defined in quantity. And uh, what's the influence of the gradient of concentration of electrons here? That's a question. And the fourth point. In the review, you say that uh, previous studies of plasma were conducted with resonance uh, laser excitation. And uh, certainly, f in order to create energy converters, uh, it's preferable to use solar or lamp radiation. And as for scientific point of view, are there differences in results? And if there are any, what are these differences? Maybe an inefficiency or some other uh, differences are found here. And these remarks do not compromise the overall high value of uh, this work. And I believe that the thesis by Mandir Mohammed. Uh, uh, Mahzub, 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 titled Investigation of uh, Photoplasma and Mixtures of so Sodium Vapor with Inert Gases based on 2D simulation, meets the requirements 
of uh, the order as of September the 1st, 2016, on the procedure of granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University. And our candidate for the degree, uh, Mandur Mohamed, deserves the academic degree of uh, the candidate of sciences and physics and mathematics and specialization 010408 plasma physics. Thank you. Thank you so much, Leonid. Uh, Mohamed, please, you have the floor to answer the comments. Thanks for these remarks. Regarding the first remark, this is quite right. At present, the experimental data are very fragmented. The obtained results show a good analogy with available results in the literature, as stated in section 4.1.3. Conducting a systematic experiment can be considered as a con consistent continuation of this work. Regarding the second remark, uh, in your version, uh, versions of Combs Hall, the assignment of electrodes to be floating is not allowed in several cases. Therefore, uh, for simulation purpose, uh, we have uh, assigned the wall of the second chamber to zero voltage ground. However, this mostly does not affect the resultant EMF as it is the difference between two voltages. <coughs> Regarding the third remark, in fact, we have tried to get a direct relationship between electron temperature and EMF, but it was rather difficult as EMF does not depend on only on the maximum value of electron temperature, but also the, on the distribution of electron temperature on the cell, and also the resulted electron vortex that appear. Regarding the fourth remark, for scientific, scientific purposes, the sources of irradiation could be based on laser and non-laser sources, but in practice, it is desirable to obtain an EMF from direct conversion of the sunlight into electricity using focused sunlight by means of lenses. Moreover, there are already numerous experimental and modeling studies for resonance laser plasma. So we limited our simulation to non-laser sources of radiation. The photo excitation rate used in our model is rather comparable with the focused sunlight by means of lenses. However, in literature, the EMF has been noticed in uh, laser excited photoplasma, such in reference 42 shown in this slide. Leonid Vasilich, how are you? Leonid, are you satisfied with the answers provided? Yes, yes, I'm fully satisfied with the answers. Thank you. Okay, um, uh, Professor Rajansky, please, your review. <coughs> yes, the work is quite relevant. Colleagues have already mentioned that. I won't repeat that. And the modeling itself. Um, creates a very good impression, the major hydrodynamics equations, uh, the chemistry, uh, the sources are included, so that's quite good. And also uh, the traditional uh, 2D um, uh, vortexes, uh, quite traditional for drafts of group, uh, they create very good impressions. Uh, and overall, the work uh, is really quite good and creates a good impression overall, uh, quite a good work. Yet, I, um, may, I've written several remarks, three remarks. The first one is associated with the fact that there's uh, no comparison of the results with experiment. Uh, certainly, it would be very nice to see this uh, comparison with experiment of final vortexes. Unfortunately, this was not done. Second remark is associated with applicability of approximation uh, through factors of bibimar holstein That's a traditional, you know, remark for such works. And finally, the third remark. I've already asked this question. Uh, it's about the comparison of 1D modeling with 2D modeling. So I asked about the difference. Um, uh, about whether these 2D effects are significant and important. But overall, um, these remarks are quite frequent. They are not dealing with uh, the basic provisions of this thesis. And uh, the thesis is quite good. It creates a very good impression, as I've already mentioned. And that's a finished scientific work. 
and uh, uh, this work is quite relevant for the study and uh, create a development of uh, photo converter. And overall, I believe that uh, the candidate for the degree deserves uh, the academic degree of the candidate of sciences in physics and mathematics and specialization plasma physics. Thank you, Vladimir. Mohammed, please, you can answer the questions. Thanks for these remarks. Uh, regarding the first rem remark, as uh, this is quite right, unfortunately, most of the previous experiments were based on photoresonance pulse, uh, pulsed laser irradiation. In the literature known to us, there is only one experimental work with photoresonance non-laser stationary irradiation. Uh, however, it deals with cesium, not sodium, and it does not contain data on electron density and temperature. As I, as I said, uh, it is plan uh, planned to uh, carry out experimental work related to the gas composition and operating temperature in our simulation. Regarding the second remark, for direct simulation of uh, rad uh, radiation trapping, the complexity of model increases in COMSOL, and the solution of in integral differential equation makes the simulation rather hard to optimize. Moreover, the equations of radiation trapping were already derived and corrected by many authors, in which the corresponding scale factors were presented in the form of analytical expressions, allowing uh, rapid evaluation for arbitrary line profiles. In COMSOL, uh, the radiation trapping can be introduced directly through scale factors without any complex simulations. Regarding third remark, currently the correct comparison of results of the one-dimensional and two-dimensional simulation for our two-chamber or even single-chamber cannot be carried out directly because of essential two-dimensionality of our model including description of radiation transfers through the scape uh, factor and de detailed uh, plasma chemistry, for instance, in the shown reference, uh, the one-dimensional calculation for sodium in which there are only one chamber, only uh, sodium bears, not sodium inert gas mixture. Therefore, the details of uh, the limitations of one-dimensional analysis have been uh, only discussed in our dissertation in the introduction of chapter two. Thank you, Vladimir. Are you satisfied with the answers? Yes, yes, I am. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Natalia, uh, the review of uh, Professor Bachkov, I am to read it out, yes? Okay. So a view of the member of the board, uh, Professor Bichko Vladimir Lvovich, on the thesis of Amanda Mohamed. So the title, uh, submitted for the uh, academic degree of the candidate of sciences in physics and mathematics and specialization in plasma physics. And the uh, review is uh, based on the classical scheme. First of all, he mentions the relevance of the study. Uh, the novelty of the study, then uh, he provides the description of uh, chapters, what Muhammad did in his work, the basic results, and uh, he makes a conclusion uh, that the results are quite uh, well described, and the thesis is a finished original scientific study that was tested in Russian and foreign conferences. And there are certain remarks that Professor Bichkov writes about um, before the major conclusion. Uh, there are six remarks. Um, in the article, you consider non-laser sources with a continuous uh, radiation spectrum, uh, solar and gas lamps. Regardless of the fact, the authors uh, l were limited with analysis of just resonance radiation trans um, and transitions. Therefore, it would be nice to assess uh, the influence of other radiation transitions on the results. In the studied uh, scheme of terms, you use the combination of highly excited levels of uh, sodium into one efficient level. What's the reason of this approximation, and is it justified? The third comment. Uh, are there other parameters except temperature of electrons that can influence the optimal EMF uh, values? And s fourth, how the chosen model absorption of uh, resonance radiation can influence the results of the conducted study and optimization of source parameters? Fifth question. In the calculation of geometry of second chamber, you use a uh, cylinder or cone, whereas a sphere and other geometry is not considered. What's the reason for that? And the sixth question, as you can understand from the text, uh, the electron vortices can 
at some conditions lead to the reduction of EMF? And does the author see the opportunity to um, uh, to weaken these vortices, maybe using some external magnetic fields. And uh, these remarks do not compromise the overall high value of the thesis. And the thesis by uh, Mandar Mohamed, titled Investigation of Photoplasma and Mixtures of Sodium Vapor with Inert Gases based on 2D Simulation, meets the requirements of uh, the order on the procedure of granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University. And Mohammed Mandur deserves the academic degree of the Candidate of Sciences in Physics and Mathematics and Specialization 010408 Plasma Physics. And that's the review of Professor Bichkov. So please, Mohammed, you can answer uh, these questions. These remarks, uh, regarding the first remark, the, uh, the dissertation goal was to understand the main physical processes in photoplasma of the gas cell. Therefore, the resonance radiation of the sodium was considered at this stage. Mm -hmm. As a continuation for this study, the absorption of linear and continuous spectrum could be accounted. For second remark, unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, the data about the 4D level were not available in the literature. So we considered average static uh, weights of 5S and, the and the 4D levels to have the rate coefficient of energy pooling. While the rate coefficient of binning ionization for this approximation was taken to be equal to the, um, the 145S level. Uh, regarding the third remark, uh, yes, uh, not only the value of electron temperature affects the EMF, but also the profile and distribution of electron temperature in addition to the current vortices intensity that appear. Fourth remark. Um, the selection of radiation trapping model changes the obtained results. We have limited our study to the pressure range of 0.1 uh, to uh, 10 Thor, where calculations of uh, scale factor were based on Doppler uh, line broadening as it dominates for a buffer gas pressure less than 10 Thor. When setting uh, up the model in, er uh, er in the earlier uh, trials, there was no account for radiation trapping and the obtained results were not the same for models in which we considered the scale factor uh, for biberman holstein For instance, the obtained EMF was less op by 0.2 volts than the models with accounting the scale factor. Uh, regarding the fifth remark, uh, simulations have uh, been carried out with other geometries of the second chamber, such as spherical elliptical geometry. However, the shape of the second chamber is not the critical parameter of changing the obtained EMF, but the diffusion length of the chamber. For the sixth remark, um, the created vortices affect the plasma parameters specifically at uh, the walls. Thus, based on the studied cases, authors suggest controlling the expansion uh, and the intensity of these vortices by selecting a proper gas type and pressure. As can be seen from the results, the presence of vortices itself does not decrease the photo EMF. However, the critical effect on photo EMF comes from the vortices expansion in the driver chamber and causing the perfusions of flux at the wall and hence the decrease in electron temperature and potential as can be seen for uh, sodium uh, xenon case. The addition of external magnetic field could increase the complexity of vortices presence. Thus, uh, the contribution of vortices is automatic. However, this could be done in future work. Thanks. Спасибо, Мухаммед. Наталья Владимировна, у нас у нас Владимир. Thank you, Mohammed. Uh, Vladimir Lvovich does not hear us. Am I right? Yes, but I believe he is satisfied with your answers. Uh, thank you so much. Um, do we have anyone among the present uh, participants that would like to ask a question or say something? Oh, I beg your pardon. I forgot. I forgot to read my review. Yes, I beg your pardon for that. Uh, so the review of uh, the chairman of the board. Well, I fully agree with my colleagues. Um, 
who characterized this work as a relevant one, as a timely one. He paid attention to the fact that the results can be used in future in real equipment and in real technical applications. Therefore, I fully agree with that. And I would like to mention the good literature review and the analysis of processes that can play a role in photoplasma consideration in the considered conditions, because this will be a very good basis for everyone who is working in the group of Anatoly Anatolievich, who will continue working on this topic. I believe this will be quite a good help for them. And I have three remarks on the work. The first remark was already mentioned, and Mohammed uh, already tried to answer it. Then maybe, therefore, maybe I won't solicit an answer for that. But still, I read out this comment. This is a computational work. Therefore, a broader comparison with the results of experimental data would be quite good. Second remark: but the model uh, is quite a complex one. It uses a lot of models of elementary constants, uh, speeds of processes, and so on. And there's a question about the stability of this model to the variation of these uh, uh, external parameters. And third remark. Uh, for me, uh, the reason of emergence of electron vortices in stationary in time plasma is not quite clear for me. And that's quite a novel um, phenomenon. Therefore, I would like to get a physical explanation for this event, for this phenomenon. But still, these remarks do not compromise uh, the overall high appraisal of this work. And uh, this work is a finished scientific study. It corresponds to the criteria established in the order on the procedure of granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University. And I believe that um, Mohamed Mandur deserves the academic degree of the candidate of sciences in physics and mathematics in specialization 010408 plasma physics. So, Mohamed, please, you can answer the questions. Thanks for this remark. Uh, for this remarks, uh, regarding the first remark, I have already answered, but I will repeat that the originality of this work is non-laser bombing stationary plasma, a mixture of sodium and inert gases. There are no experimental data about these. Uh, there are data for laser bombing in pure alkali metals as shown in reference one. Uh, uh, stationary plasma and cesium fiber as shown in uh, reference two and three. The obtained results however, show a good uh, analogy with the available lit uh, results in literature, literature as stated in section 4.1.3. Uh, Conducting a systematic experiment can be considered as a consistent continuation of this work. Regarding the second remark, the model is quite stable for a specific range of parameters, such as pressure variation between 0.1 to 10 torr However, out of this range, a recalculation of use constant and approximations should be considered. Regarding the third remark, it is known that the current divergence in plasma is equal to zero. From vector analysis, for any vector A, the relation divergence of rotor A equals zero holds. Therefore, the current in the plasma is always vortex with the exception of one, dimension, uh, one dimensional geometry. This fact has been uh, known for long time in plasma in a magnetic field, but in uh, uh, ordinary non-magnetic plasma, this fact is gradually realized after the publication of the fundamental work in the show and reference of uh, Yevgeny Anatolovich Bogdanov. Thank you so much, and let's continue our, mm, our procedure. Do we have anyone to sp uh, willing to speak out or co to comment on, on the speech of Mohammed? Can I ask a question? Yes, yes, please. Valery, is that you? Yes, I have the following question. It is not dealing with the thesis, uh, just from the point of view of uh, these photoelectron transformers. We've already discussed that solar light is a broadband light and resonance transition is uh, a narrow uh, absorber, uh, is a narrow band absorber. Therefore, I have the following question. Can we, for example, expand this broad width if we add up all the alkaline metals at once, not just uh, sodium, but everything at once? Yes. 
think it, it can be done. Uh, the, the current model uh, uh, um, is very, uh, is, is quite stable for uh, the, the range of uh, pressure that we deal with. If we have all uh, ray coefficient constant and the other uh, constant for uh, simulation, we can expand, uh, expand this uh, study uh, as much as possible for other alkali metals. Uh, so, Valeria, are you satisfied? Yes, yes, I'm satisfied with the answer. Mm -hmm. I specified what I wanted to. Natalia, do we have an external review submitted online? No. Uh -huh. Okay. Now it's time to give the floor to our academic supervisor, please, Anatoly, you have the floor. As our candidate for the degree arrived from Egypt, from sunny Egypt, and wanted to work with plasma physics, I believe, we ha oh, it's quite logic that we had an idea to study photoplasma. Why? Among other things. All uh, the board members mentioned uh, this week correspondence with experiment. Therefore, we have a hope that when Mohammed will go uh, to Egypt and will get a professor position, uh, being a PhD already, maybe he will uh, organize some experiments because they have a lot of sun in Egypt and maybe as a continuation of work, we hope, uh, in cooperation with our universities, maybe we'll go to Egypt as well, so maybe we will uh, manage to uh, answer these questions that were mentioned about the practical application. And uh, basically what I wanted to mention, Mohammed arrived uh, without knowing uh, the knowledge of Russian. He uh, sorted it out very quickly, sorted everything out. He understood um, how to work with plasma models, with computational models, with COMSOL. He learned how to use COMSOL. And he's really quite industrious, quite hardworking. He has a very good motivation. Previously, I thought that just Chinese have a very good motivation. What I, based on what I saw before, when we were on our PhD courses, and like uh, some of our uh, current students. Um, they don't have good motivation. Well, unlike them all, uh, um, Mohammed showed a very good interest in the topic, and I had a very good impression, a very favorable impression on his work, on his professional uh, talents. And I believe his professional talent grew a lot, and it really uh, corresponds with the level of PhD or candidate of sciences. So I believe we can just uh, support the opinions of our uh, board members that this work really deserves this um, academic degree, and it was already published. Uh, and I wish all, all the future success, and I wish Mohammed to continue this work to get this professor position, and I wish that he would continue his work. And uh, Thank you very much. Uh, please turn off the microphone. Okay, do we have anyone else willing to say something? Okay, I have a wish to say um, that uh, this work um, of Mohammed is something that I've seen myself. I frequently saw him at the fact at the department, and I fully agree with um, uh, his um, thesis supervisor that he, he Mohammed is quite accurate in his uh, work. He is quite industrious, and he. Uh, wanted to write his work as soon as possible and as efficiently as possible. When they expanded this period of PhD course uh, to four years, we had cases when PhD students managed to defend their thesis on time, but that's not quite a frequent case, and Mohammed managed to write his work uh, within this four years period, and he you know, he had to change the topic. He was not dealing with uh, plasma physics before he came. Therefore, certainly, I really highly appreciate his talents and the work as well. So anyone else willing to say something? No, none? OK, thank you then. Here we stop our discussion. And before we conclude, 
And before the final vote, oh, there's a formal thing to ask. I want to ask the members of the board and uh, the candidate for the degree if the members of the board or our candidate for the degree has have any comments on the procedure of the um, defense, maybe something associated with uh, the remote uh, mode of work. And I need to solicit the answers of all the board members. Let's start with our colleagues who are working remotely. Leonid, do you have any comments? No, no comments. I believe everything is quite all okay. Okay, Vladimir, what about you? No comments. Everything is okay. Valery, what about you? No comments as well. Everything is okay. Unfortunately, we don't have Vladimir Lvovich with us, but uh, still, Igor, what about you? Yes, I also hope to see Vladimir Lvovich, but uh, um, still I have no comments about the work. Everything is okay. Maybe, Mohammed, you have certain comments? None? Uh, okay, as you vote. Okay, thank you, everyone. And now let's uh, shift to the most important point, to the voting procedure. Distinguished colleagues, it's uh, 20 minutes to two. How do you think is there a need to have a closed voting? We're going to have an open balloting afterwards. So is there a need to hold a closed session where we could discuss uh, the results of the work? Or er everything is clear? I believe everything is quite clear and we don't need uh, some closed session. Okay, thank you. Okay, we are not going to have this uh, five-year, uh, five-five-minute five closed discussion. And therefore, if I may, I uh, raise the question on the award of the academic degree of um, candidates of sciences in physics and mathematics and specialization in plasma physics to Mohammad Mandur. And now we're going to have open balloting. I would like to remind you that the decision of the recitation board on conferring the academic degree is positive, provided more than 50% of the board members, but not fewer than three people, voted in favor. So, Igor Cheslavich, what's your opinion? I vote for the award of the academic degree to Mohammed. Uh, then, Professor Smirnov, what about you? I also vote for the award of the academic degree. Okay, thank you. Then, um, uh, Professor Simonchuk. Yes, I also vote uh, to award the academic degree. Um, um, Professor Rozhansky, I also vote for. Okay, I join in and I also vote for the award of the academic degree. Unfortunately, Vladimir Lvovich has no right to vote. And therefore, out of all the members of the board that have uh, the right to vote, five, men, uh, five members voted for the award of the academic degree. And the decision, and we decide to um, award the academic degree of the candidate of sciences in physics and mathematics and spe specialization 010408, plasma physics, to Mohammed Mandur. <laughs> wait, wait a bit. Uh, the conclusion. Oh. For the opportunity to, uh, re uh, to present my research work and for the valuable scientific discussion, all questions and comments I will certainly take uh, into account and include them in my future research. I would like to thank the, de uh, the Department of Optics at St. Uh, Petersburg State University for giving me the opportunity to defend my thesis. I am very <coughs> grateful for um, my scientific supervisor, uh, Anatoly Anatolyevich Kudryatsov, and my scientific uh, advisor, Sergei uh, Anatolyevich Sashkevich. Also, thanks to Evgeny Anatolyevich Bardanov. Thank you so much for guiding me and supporting me through uh, throughout these years. Without you, uh, this thesis would have never been written. I'm grateful to all professors 
of the Department of Optics of St. Petersburg State University, and especially to the head uh, of the uh, department, Nikolai Alexandrovich Timofeev, for the knowledge and support they provided, through, um, uh, they provided throughout the training at uh, the department. At last but not least, I would like to thank my family, my mother, my father, my beloved wife, and my sweet children for their support and patience. Thanks for the guests for attending this defense. Thank you. Спасибо. Thank you so much. So, Mohammed, we award you with the degree of Candidate of Sciences in Physics and Mathematics. We wish you further success in academic work. And as Anatoly wished, we want you to continue these studies um, in your homeland and we'll be happy uh, to, to learn about your success. And now we can give the floor to our candidate for the degree. And just a moment, I would like to thank our members of the board who were working remotely. Thank, I would like to thank them for taking part in our work. We're really grateful and we hope that in future we'll have fruitful cooperation as well. Thank you, everyone. I wish you good health and good luck. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, I announce the end of our broadcast. Thank you.